Hi everybody, Ron Placone here, uh, and this is another special edition of Media Bites, and this is the final uh, part. This is part four of my independent project of uh, the corporate media coverage on the potential conflict in Syria. Uh, so to recap real quick, uh, for those of you that may not have been following it uh, so far, and maybe this is your first uh, interaction, uh, what I have been doing was each day starting from Tuesday, and ending today, Thursday, I had been uh, analyzing uh, each corporate media outlet. I, I would wake up in the morning, and the first thing I would have to do is, you know, log on to one of the corporate media outlets in, in the United States, uh, CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News. Uh, and I did one each morning. Tuesday, I did CNN. Wednesday, I did MSNBC. And today, Thursday, I did Fox News. Um, and I would kind of just... You know, look over their co coverage regarding Syria and then make a video about it. Uh, what I found was it was largely pro-war. Uh, dissenting voices were given very minimal uh, ad, or uh, excuse me, <laughs> ad, it's ironic, article space. They were given very minimal, uh, usually just a sentence or two, like, well, so-and-so thinks that a military strike might not do anything. Um, and the overall narrative that I saw wasn't necessarily highlighting the idea of conflict in Syria itself. It was more highlighting the struggle that Obama was going through to get the proper approval. And, you know, they would highlight po what was going on politically between Congress. Um, in Fox News's case, they, they highlighted a lot of the uh, potential conflict with Putin, the potential conflict with uh, the, the Pope, and so forth. And it was more the hurdles Obama was, was going through to get approval. So it was almost like Obama was just some protagonist trying to get his approval to drop a bomb, as opposed to, should we or should we not be dropping bombs? Uh, so to me, that's completely backwards. But that was the story the, the big media was telling. They were just parroting big government and big business, because there's a lot of... You know, a lot of institutions out there that benefit from war, that uh, are in cahoots with big media. That's that's just the truth. You know, General Electric still owns a big share of MSNBC. Um, and then, of course, in MSNBC's case, uh, when they were presenting dissenting views, they weren't necessarily highlighting what those views were. They were just highlighting who those politicians were. And, oh, it's so interesting that people on the far left and people on the far right are agreeing that we shouldn't have a military intervention in Syria. That's so interesting. So clearly, if you oppose a military intervention in Syria, you must be on the fringes too, one way or the other. Uh, so it had been largely pro-war media coverage from the corporate media outlets. Uh, so I would look at them each morning, and, th and then after that, you know, I could go to a Democracy Now! or an alternate or, or an independent source to, you know, kind of get a more balanced approach on what's, this, what's going on here. The Daily Coast brings up a very good point. Uh, it's easy to oppose this Syrian intervention. One simple fact is on our side. No one has made a serious case as to how lobbying a few low-impact cruise missiles will accomplish much. I agree with this. And the reason no one has made a serious case for that is because, thanks to our corporate media, nobody's had to. The conversation has not been around um, what a military strike would actually accomplish whether or not we should do a military strike even. The conversation has been around what hurdles are Obama overcoming. This is parroting big uh, big government's narrative. Uh, not only that, but it, it's making it more of a theatrical thing. It, it's playing on the sensationalism. It's playing on the polarization. Like, oh, people on the left and right agree on something. Well, that's weird because we're always supposed to be so polarized, right? Be afraid. Uh, so this whole analysis has been very disappointing. Uh, for me, in regards to what the corporate media has been presenting, uh, but it has not been surprising at all. So, if we do have a military strike in Syria, I, I think the main reason uh, this was so easily accomplished on, on the government side was because the, the media has, has just rolled over and given them exactly what they want. And, and this media, I mean, you know, in times of conflict such as these, we see now more than ever that the media is interesting is interested in serving big business they're interested in serving big government they're interested in serving the haves of society and there's a serious disconnect uh, between the main corporate media and us the people the populace that they're supposed to serve um, this is a very serious problem in any uh, country that claims to be a democracy 
Uh, so, you know, I guess we just got to wait to see how this unfolds. But, um, you know, assuming that there is a strike on Syria, you know, I, I have my, you know, I have my analysis on why that is. And I think the media is a serious culprit uh, to blame because they're supposed to be there for us and, and they're really not, not even close. So uh, thank you for tuning in to the, this four-part series. I, I hope you got something out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing more stuff like this in the future if there's more, uh, you know, types of situations where this analysis is, is warranted. But, uh, again, uh, this has been Media Bites, a uh, special video edition of Media Bites. And, uh, you know, please tune in on Radio Free Nashville every Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, that's noon and at 3 p.m. And, uh, you know, thanks for uh, being a part of this. This is Ron Placone, uh signing out.